everyone, and thank you for coming to this performance panel. My name is Yurai Koish, and I'm going to be uh, trying to moderate this uh, large group of wonderful musicians. And uh, so the way how I was thinking about, um, I mean, we heard so much about motivation from a um, variety of perspectives, uh, and also uh, from the performance perspective as well. So I thought uh, that I would make up a question. And since we have basically 20 people to, uh, to talk, uh, that question, uh, uh, I call it an FFF question. Um, and it is, uh, maybe while we are waiting for uh, uh, the Pamplemousse Ensemble, uh, maybe you can start thinking about it. And I was thinking about whether you can uh, think about piece of music that you perform, or is it in your repertoire, um, that uh, you, could, uh, um, or you could think about how the notation of that piece made the performance fun, frustrating, smushed. The third one is uh, is a Slovakian word, and I just want to hear you say it. So, uh, so they're, they're basically, uh, you can take a uh, while we are waiting. Uh, you know, just uh, think about it, and, um, and then we just uh, since we have a limited number of uh, uh, microphones, just uh, come up to the podium and introduce yourself and tell us about your music. Now, this can be a single piece. It can be uh, three different pieces: fun, frustrating, smush. So. I will tell you what it is at the end of the panel. <laughs> um, well, uh, I might as well start by talking about one piece that we've done a lot with the uh, constructivists, um, but not here, which is Cornelius Cardew's Can you maybe the people Okay. The Hello. Um, I'm Stephen Rice from the Global Constructivists, and um, we last year we did two performances of Cornelius Cardew's treatise, which we think were the first two all vocal performances. And as most of you will know, um, that's uh, 170 or so pages. Yeah, but a few have dropped off the back of my copy uh, <laughs> because I got a little patient. Um, and. Um, so that lasts about an hour in our version. Uh, and one of the things that is sometimes fun, sometimes frustrating, and probably schmished as well, uh, is the fact that we, uh, as a very democratic group, uh, rehearse in, in a discursive way, usually, rather than having anyone uh, impose a vision on, uh, on how we do that. And um, I'm someone who has quite a lot of experience and some of the most um, top-down uh, guided ensembles uh, of the British choral tradition. Uh, I was a choral scholar at King's College Cambridge uh, for uh, three years and uh, you definitely do not get very much uh, creative input into that uh, institution's performances uh, as a member of it. So uh, it's, it's a very empowering thing to, uh, to be part of vocal constructivists. Um, it, it also means that we have to spend a lot of time uh, working out our ideas, uh, but we get to uh, to understand how we are going to approach a piece, and a lot of very different perspectives uh, on graphic notation in particular. And I hope one of the things that came out of last night's concert was that um, graphic scores throw up a lot of very different, starkly different interpretive ideas. Um, if you compare, I think, the way in which the uh, Mark Applebaum's piece uh, came out in performance with Anthony Braxton's piece, uh, you really wouldn't uh, have, have any danger of confusing those two. Uh, yet, in principle, we could have simply uh, reversed those and not told you. Uh, and I wonder sometimes whether you would have noticed the, the composer would have known that his cannons weren't going on and so on. But in principle, we might have uh, played a trick on you, and uh, maybe that would have uh, would have come off if we wanted to do that. So I'm just going to throw that uh, into the discussion to start things off. Um, so uh, the ensemble Pantomus is here. Just to uh, I'm, I'm revising the rules. We, we are going to uh, do those introductions under two minutes since I, I have a super stopwatch. Um, so, um, you know, the idea is uh, that you think about the piece uh, in the repertoire that you performed or written, in which uh, the notation made uh, the performance A, fun, B, uh, frustrating, and C, 
smushed. Smushed? Smush? Yes. It's a word that nobody knows what it means. But it sounds like smushed, which is an English word. It means squashed. Smushed? Well, smushed. Smushed. Six consonants. Smushed. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, so, who would like to join? The microphone is yours. There are 20 people that we would like to hear from. Okay. Okay, so hello, my name is Lauren Redhead. I'm also a vocal constructivist and I um, am an organ performer as well. Um, so maybe I'll answer questions quite generally with respect to the body of music that I perform as a whole. Um, for me, what I think is most fun, and um, perhaps potentially frustrating, is working very closely with the composers who write the pieces that I perform and that's something that I really value and makes the music very personal to me. Um, frustrating for me, I think perhaps um, some, well, a lot of the composers that I work with are extremely open in terms of what they would accept in the interpretation of their works, what they're happy for me to do, and whilst that's great because I can do lots of different things, sometimes that's also frustrating because it's actually nice to hear someone say, I really want this to happen, can you do that, and, and work with those types of input as well. So having to have that amount of creative input sometimes in a short space of time can be frustrating. Um, so smushed. Um, that sounds great, and I think that's also what I like about the music that I performed at. Um, <laughs> often, <laughs> often I think with, um, you know, we, we can maybe intellectualise the music that we perform and that we listen to and that we study, but actually I think it's quite empowering to be able to say, I think that this music and the scores and other people's performances and sometimes my performances are extremely beautiful and powerful and moving to me, and that's for me, one of the big positives about performing experiments with her. Excellent. <laughs> and this will enable us uh, to, to have that question uh, and answer period. You look ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say something. Yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm Will, uh, Will Redman. I'm a composer and I play a lot of my own music. This is one of my pieces. Scroll, it looks like fun, doesn't it? It's really frustrating to get on a music stand. I'll tell you that much. And Schmirsch, um, it pretty much is. I studied here as an undergraduate, and I was first, uh, one of Anthony Braxton's Falling River scores was first placed in front of my face as an 18-year-old, first semester uh, college freshman, and that was an amazingly fun experience, um, and also frustrating because um, it was accompanied with a folio of system notes, about 40 to 50 pages long, that detailed um, all of the meanings of the various different symbols, except that I was told that same you know, week or month or whatever that a lot of those um, system notes were no longer current or referred to music other than the one that was um, in front of me. And so you know, it was this tension <laughs> that was immediately introduced between whether to uh, follow up all of the possible direct interpretations that had at one point been posited by the composer for some of that music, and on the other hand, um, reading the, the painted portions of it as simply a phenomenological and perceptual experience of delving into a deep and sort of multi, a very rich and infinitely sort of finely pixelated um, colored uh, zone there, and what I really have been feeling is particularly smirched about this entire um, field of notation that a lot of people are, are working in where it's like interpretationally open and it's about fidelity and it's about looking, but it's also about um, free, freedom to sonicize that experience of looking in whatever way that you feel potentially is 
the, the Shmersh part comes in where I keep thinking of devotional and meditational um, images like altarpieces that are used in uh, a lot of world traditions and wondering about the, the Shmershness of, of all of that type of looking as a vector for um, focus and inward focus and just wondering if other people are commercialing the same commercials as that. Yeah. Is it going to stretch this far? Yeah, um, I'm George. Um, I'm a member of the Vocal Constructivist um, and I'm a composer as well. Um, we, I'm going to talk about a different piece that I performed with the group. Um, it was by uh, Volker Swaff Schaefer. There's an example on the back of your programs, actually. Um, and the piece that I performed with a few other people was called Lectura, um, which was um, frustrating because it was a series of complex actions. Uh, there was actually 88 symbols to interpret, um, all of which um, we had to interpret though you'd have a box and then a selection of these symbols. Um, so actually trying to read this at speed um, was particularly nasty, um, especially when I had a cardboard box which I had to throw on my head and smack my head around the cardboard box at various points and scream and inwardly scream and various other things. However, it was gratifying, it was amazingly fun and exhilarating. Um, and that's one of the things I find the pure energy that comes out of a lot of these scores. Um, and the idea that um, a lot of these graphic scores that we perform are so complex. The complexity involved in them is there's just so much to keep in your head. It's unbelievably uh, intense, um, but great fun. And uh, Schmerst, well, um, when I was whacking my head around for about 30 seconds within this cardboard box um, and I was losing oxygen, uh, that, was, that was fairly Schmerst when I took it from off my head eventually. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alison, and I'm in the Vocal Constructivist, and I trained as a painter, although I work with lens-based media now, really. And one of the things that struck me about working with pictures is that the musicians working with them don't see them in the same way that I do. And I don't think they get the same things from them. They certainly don't hear the pictures in the same way I do. So it's been quite interesting um, looking at different interpretations. And the other thing that struck me is that if I see a still image of painting, I think of it as, as a, a record of a series of journeys. And quite often these graphic scores, sometimes there's a series of journeys on one page, but sometimes they're continuous, like the card do. And I think this, I was interested by the kinds of journey that you could take through, through this sort of notation. And smushed, is that right? Is that right? This is, I think this is really important. One of the things I don't think that's being explored in graphic scores is the, the field of graphic design that uses letters of the alphabet and which uses them because of their shape, um, their symbolism, the parts of words that they form and all those things. And if you talk to a graphic designer, they could talk to you for an hour and a half about the letter O. And, and some do. And I think I'd like, I'd, like that to, I'd like to see some what I think of as alphabet graphics. Okay, thanks. not seeing Alex here. If Alex was here, he would answer that because he has worked a lot with the Tribal Group. Well, we'll hold it. We'll hold it. So, um, but thank you, Alison, for that. I wanted to say that um, it's been tremendously good fun working with the vocal constructivists. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The frustrations are all due to Schmerscht, actually. So, I mean, if it wasn't for Schmerscht, we would have enough money for room rental, for concert venues. We wouldn't have to stress on the tube. We would be able to travel to all of the venues very easily. Everybody would get there on time. Schmerscht is the problem. 